I'm storm tracker meteorologist Allison Miller. Our spring season got off to a slow start, but it has picked up and that's all because we're seeing our classic severe weather setup. This cold, uh, this upper level low and cold front bringing in the cold air behind it, clashing with this warm air. We're also getting on the one side, dry air colliding with the humid air. So right along that boundary layer is where we're getting a severe weather outbreak all across the central plains, and that extends into Texas as well with the largest outbreak right over Oklahoma. And this is how we get the formation of the tornadoes to start. Right where those air masses are colliding, we get a wind shear, which is the wind changing with height. So we get this rotating column of air on the ground. The thunderstorm lifts it up and turns it vertical, and that's where we get that violent rotation. That's basically what the tornado is. Sometimes you can't even see these because you can't see air. It's not colored. The way you see these thunderstorms form is when it picks up the debris or those water drops, and you can see the rotation from the cloud to the ground. Now you got you need to check out this video. Uh, this was caught on tape by Charles Cook and you can see the formation of the funnel cloud and then it touching the ground and that's where it picks up the debris and you start to really see the shape of this tornado strengthening. This was the storm that moved through yesterday, historic storm from Newcastle over towards Moore and you can see the strength and intensity of the debris stretching over to miles wide that debris ball uh, incredible video that he has posted on YouTube. Let's go back to the graphics and you can see this tornado from Moore will go down in the records along with some of the largest tornadoes on record. The tri-state tornado back in 1925 that traveled over 200 miles and stretched on the ground three hours long. Also in most recent history, the Joplin tornado back in May 2011. It was an EF5 uh, tracked over 22 miles. That's about B cave to Mainer, the length with winds over 200 miles per hour, 160 death and the more tornado likely to be an EF4 or EF5 again with that two mile wide long debris. Now May is the month where we typically see the most tornadoes in the entire year over the US. We see over a thousand peaking in May at about 300. June we also see a little over 200. July, July it starts to drop and then it uh, continues to drop down as we lose that uh, daytime heating that we get from the spring storms. And also the majority of them occur in Tornado Alley. We're just on the tail end of that. So again it stretches across the central plains where we see a lot of flat ground. We get the cold air moving over the Rockies, the warm moist air from the Gulf, and it's right in this area, especially uh, from Kansas to Oklahoma and right into North Texas. That is the, the hot spot for those tornadoes to form. Good thing to keep in mind as we reach our severe weather season is a watch versus a warning. Now, watch indicates that there could be some hazardous weather in that day or the next day. So you should just plan in case we get a warning. Now warning means that we're likely to see that weather imminent or it is occurring right now. So you need to take action. So watch is just a kind of heads up warning is take action. Now great uh, key things you can take with you here are our weather text that we send daily to give you a heads up on what the weather will be. Also on our KITV Facebook page and Twitter account. If you subscribe to those tweets, it sends you an automatic warning or watch that the National Weather Service has put out for our area and it goes straight to your smartphone. Also, you can track those storms anytime with our KITV weather app. Just search KI weather on your smartphone. And the other thing you can do is watch those storms. If you're on the internet, uh, you can look at our interactive radar. That's right on KITV.com. I'm storm tracker meteorologist Allison Miller.